Well, hello, 1P, and welcome to the first lesson of your new unit. Uh, we're talking about relationships this unit, and we're going to start by discussing scatter plots and how to interpret a scatter plot. So, our goal here is I know how to make a scatter plot and how to use it to make meaning of data. Uh, now, a lot of times I collect data from the class, but since we're all sort of at a different point here, um, I decided to use data that I already had from a different class. Now the uh, the names have been changed um, so that we don't need to have any discussion about who these were but this is uh, information from my class last year. Um, to make a scatter plot you need to gather or have gathered for you, which I have, uh, a whole bunch of whoop, let's put that back, a whole bunch of individual points of data. The following is some information gathered from a previous class and I wanted to use it to complete the graph on the next page. Now we're going to do a scatter plot and I'm going to show you here we'll go on dual page display here so you can see what I mean. There's our new uh, we're going to graph our information on this chart uh, and if you don't remember what a scatter plot is I'm going to graph the first few points for you. So we need to take a look here this is height versus foot length and notice I've got height over here and foot length on the bottom um, so for each person on here and we don't have to put their name with it just each person gets their own point on this graph and so for Carter here his foot length is 26 so I go to 26 here which is right down here and then Carter's height is 181 so I go 26 and then I go up the 26 line until I get to 181 over on the sideline which is going to be right there and if we go over there we'll see we're right at 181 so there's the point for Carter now I'm going to just check off that I've graphed Carter so that I don't lose my place and I'm going to graph Tom Tom is 22 versus 166. Now notice I'm ignoring this arm span column because I didn't ask you to do anything about with that. We're going to use that for some more information a little bit later. Okay. Um, so right now we're just ignoring the arm span column. So now I'm going to do Tom. Tom is 22, 166. So I go to 22 here and then I go all the way up to where it's 166. So I went past it. There we go. There's the 166 and I put a dot there and now I'm going to check off Tom we got him now Teresa is 26 173 so 26 is right here remember 26 is the foot length and then we go to 173 so I'm going to go up 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 until I get to 173 there's 172 173 is right there now you're going to continue that process until you have checked off everybody. Once you've checked off everybody there's going to be a few questions there. Hopefully you'll see some sort of pattern in the data that you can make some sort of generalization about how someone's foot length relates to their height. Now I've got a few definitions to give you before you go on and, and do that kind of stuff and I want you to discuss with me in class exactly how foot length and height are related and things like that uh, but we've got some definitions here that we need to go over first so the first definition is axis the the axes are the vertical and horizontal lines that divide up the four quadrants on a plane the vertical axis is the y-axis or the dependent axis and the horizontal axis is the x-axis or the independent axis. Now here we've only really shown one of the quadrants on the plane. Um, there is four quadrants on the plane. This is only the first quadrant. If you notice if we extend these then we divide them up into the four different quadrants. So this would be quadrant two, this would be quadrant three, and this would be quadrant four. Now over here we have negative numbers and down here we have negative numbers and that's why we don't bother with these three quadrants because they have some negatives in them and it is impossible to have a negative foot length and it is impossible to have a negative height. Height. So that's why we're ignoring quadrants two, three, and four for this particular um, particular exercise. Now, one other thing I want to point out to you here 
is when on our axes, when we put these little things on our axes, it means they don't start at zero, zero. Usually where the two axes meet is where both the x axis and the y axis, and remember this is our x axis and this is our y axis, although we're not really calling them x's and y's right now um, because we're calling them foot length and height. They have some meaning of some sort. Okay. Um, so our x axis and y axis, where they meet, that point there is called the origin. And it's always 0, 0 where the x and the y meet. And if we don't want to start it at 0, 0, if we think it's silly to start at 0, 0 because nobody has a foot length of 0 and nobody has a height of 0 and nobody is even close to having a foot length or a height of 0, um, then we put these little jagged marks to show that we're not starting at 0. Uh, so that's what all of that means there. Okay, now a scatter plot is what we were just completing here. A scatter plot, let's pull that one back too. A uh, scatter plot is a graph of plotted points that show a relationship between two sets of data. Um, or it may show absolutely no relationship between two sets of data, but we use the scatter plot to see if we can see any kind of relationship. And so right here, you're already sort of starting to see a relationship come out. Even though I've only put three points on this page, it looks like this shorter person here has a smaller foot length than this taller person up here has. Uh, bigger foot length. So it looks like there might be some sort of uh, pattern to that data. Now the dependent variable is a variable or characteristic whose value depends on another. It's often called the y value and plotted on the vertical axis of the graph. So in this one in particular we've decided that height depends on foot length. So this axis, whatever we put up here, depends on this down here. Now height and foot length, we could just as easily say that foot length depends on height, um, but most of the time there will be a clear dependency what depends on something else. So it's always the vertical depends on the horizontal. Now the independent variable is a variable or characteristic whose value is depended upon by another. We usually know or set these values and then calculate and and can calculate. Okay, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense the way it's written there. We usually know or set these values and then and then uh, calculate the dependent variables based on them. It is often called the x value and is plotted on the horizontal axis on the grid. Okay. And then lastly, an outlier. An outlier is a piece of collected data that appears far outside the trend of the other data. Outliers are often deemed to be a mistake or unusual and disregarded during the analysis of the data. So if I were to um, plot all of these points and I see a definite pattern, but say there was a person over here who was really, really short but had a great big foot, okay, um, that would be considered an outlier. It would be outside the, outside the pattern or the trend in the data. If it was way over here and everything else was sort of over in this spot, we'd say that um, it, was, it was unusual. Um, and usually outliers are completely disregarded because they're often um, thought of as being measurement errors. Um, and in that case, if they're measurement errors, then they really aren't um, going to be very useful for our data. Now, if I go over here, I have some questions involved here. Now, these questions uh, are based on the scatter plot you're going to finish. And I want you to talk to me about these questions once you get them done. Uh, I'm not going to give you the answers for them because I think they're pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the only thing that I'm going to say is here is the relationship weak, moderate, or strong. So how do you decide whether you've got a weak relationship, a moderate relationship, or a strong relationship? Um, well, if they form a really strong pattern, you're going to see them be in maybe a straight line and they're, they're really, really close to a straight line. If it's moderate, they're going to be a straight line, but there's going to be a few things that are kind of outside the straight line. And if it's a weak relationship, they're going to be way outside. There's not going to be a whole lot of a pattern at all. And if you just get a whole lot of random 
data points, then we say there's actually no relationship. So that's the difference between weak, strong, and moderate. And it doesn't have to be linear. We could have something that went like this. If I have points that do that, they obviously are forming a pattern. It's not a straight line, but it is a pattern. Um, and that would be a very strong relationship because it looks like it's a very, a very neat and very smooth curve. So I'm going to leave you with those and then you have a few questions to do uh, from the textbook as well. Uh, and then I will come around and talk to you about these um, during the course of the period you're working on them. Uh, so that concludes our lesson for today.